I am here with Maria Brink. And I am here with Zach Myers. And we are going to interview each other. So this is kind of the first webisode that we've done like this yes. on this uh, thing. And um, I got the idea. I'm a, I'm super obsessed with Inside the Actor Studio. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite shows of all time. Okay. And so that's why I started this show. So we're going to interview each other and just keep it loose, I think. Okay, if it gets ahead. too serious, we'll, we'll... You can get as serious as you want. Mine are pretty loose, but you can get <coughs> serious. Well, my first one is, if you could have a complete book written about you, like a biography, like mm -hmm. some, from an outside source, Okay. what would it be called? And who Ooh. would you want to be the author? What would I, you want I to be called? I absolutely want to do a book. Okay. Completely want to so do a book. So you could be the author too. That's the thing though. That's the point of the question. You could be the author as well. Mm, I'm dyslexic. So I'd have to have a, right. a co-writer. That's fair, for sure. Fair enough. <laughs> I am with numbers. I'm the same way. Okay. But I don't know what it would be called. Something... Uh, We're already deep. First one. We're already deep. The, I don't know. Cheesy would be like on the brink or something cheesy like that because that's my last name. That's a good. That's yeah, good. I mean that would be like the, the easy, but I'd probably have to dig deeper. And right. It would probably be more of a deep okay. name. But you know what? I'm glad you well, asked me that because now I'm gonna. You now know, you're gonna think about. I'm it. gonna think about it. Yeah. That's, that's, when that's I, when a, I figure it out, I'll let you know. All right. I'll start cliche. What is the most exciting moment of your career? Chomp. Headlining Kansas City Rock Fest was amazing. Okay. Um, like seventy yeah. thousand people. That, and then one of the other ones um, happened. You were there. Um, at the Dime Bash thing, when I, I met Dave Grohl, and then kind of formed a friendship with Dave Grohl. I was a huge Nirvana fan, so growing up, that was like this. That was like the ceiling for me. And then that night, actually, I, I played with Dave Grohl, Jerry Cantrell, Mike Inez on stage. Yeah, that was time. an amazing night. So that was really cool for me. I read that one of your favorite bands, or a band that you really love, is my favorite band, which is U2. I love U2. So my question was, your favorite U2 record and your favorite U2 song. Probably the Joshua Tree. I mean, I know it's like. Uh, me too. Though. Okay, okay. So. And uh, probably with or without you. And I know it's so. Okay, are we kindred spirits? Favorite? That's okay. Okay, that's, okay that's good. Same for me too. Okay, I mean, thing. I know it, it's, it's so many people's favorite, but I that album, I just loved it so much. And it was really just. I still listen to it. Yeah, that's actually my favorite song of all time. Okay. Yeah, so. I mean, it's definitely up there for me. I covered it by myself just because. And I love it. It's, it's a special album. I'm glad. See, now, now I know that. What is your weapon of choice during a zombie apocalypse? And where would you tell, take shelter and why? Weapon of choice during a zombie apocalypse. I love Zombieland, the movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with the, okay. the the Woody Harrelson gun. Okay. So the the sawed-off that he keeps in his, <laughs> in his leg. So I'm going to go with that. Where would I take shelter? I'm trying to think of where it would be a safe... Food and weapons. Yeah, I think I think a Costco. Yeah, okay. You can find a lot of things at a Costco. Yeah. Weed eaters, lawnmowers, and then can you get like shotguns and things there though? I don't think you can buy guns there. Like Walmart, you can get. That's cars, true. And food. Or... <laughs> I'm switching my answer to Walmart. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Walmart now. Okay. All right. I read a lot about your your upbringing mm -hmm. and your pat and and how you came up. And yeah. I was wondering if that's lyrically, because you're you're almost like Brent in a way. Your lyrics are very deep. Is that your main draw? Yeah, absolutely. Even for me with other singers that I love that like touch me, I I think that when you can feel what they're singing, I think when they give you those goosebumps and yeah. you know they're singing it and you feel it. Like I always wanted to sing from personal experiences. And yes, like I think that my life, my upbringing, and things that I went through are absolutely things that I can bring up that people can feel and I wouldn't be who I am as a singer and performer had I not experienced it. I've always said this about fans, you can only bullshit people for so long. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to come from a real place. And I, and I think that's where our bands, even though different musical worlds mm -hmm. that we came from, I think that's why this tour has gone so well too. Is yeah. Because it's two honest bands that, that play honest music. And that, to me, that means a lot. And I think that's where our fans connect with you guys. And the first time Brent played Blood for me, you know, I was like, I was like, this is awesome. Because it was an original song. And it was a it was a rock song, and it, it it connected, and you could feel it, and it had it was a good song. When is the first time you can remember truly being proud of yourself? It was weird for me when I was younger, and I got my record deal when I was fourteen. I, if I'd hear myself on radio, I wasn't proud of myself because I hated my voice. <sighs> hated my voice. Oh no. Um, my grandmother came to see me when I was sixteen, and that was the first time I was proud of myself because I saw how much she was proud of me. So that, that made me incredibly happy. And then um, she got to watch us again uh, in a headlining arena tour that we did on Carnival Madness. And like, 
I got her like a car service, picked her up at her house, like she drove down into the arena. So that like anytime she could come to a show for me, that was like that was the one for me, like whenever she used. I always felt proud of myself watching her be proud of me. If that makes sense. No, that sounds All perfect. Right. All that, right. That's a perfect answer. What is your most embarrassing moment on and off stage? Oh, I fell off stage in the middle of a song. So I was just like fully singing in the middle of this emotional moment and like fell off the front of the stage like nine feet. Were you okay though? <laughs> okay. And I kept singing, but I was like trying to crawl back up stage and oh. I couldn't get back on stage. So like <laughs> all these people ran to help me, like push me back up. And in Sometimes the end- Sometimes the help makes it worse too. It's just like, cause it just looks, it just draws more attention to what happened. Yeah. I mean, it, that's probably the most embarrassing moment of my life. I've, I've fell a few times since then. So I've learned that when you fall, you just kind of laugh it off. I'm the most clumsy person in the world. And just don't so. care anymore. And when you don't care and you're not so embarrassed, everyone else kind of doesn't care. I, I agree with so that. So that, that's kind of what I've learned. It's the most embarrassing moment off stage. Oh God, I don't know. Oh, I peed my pants once on a roller coaster. This is good stuff though. It was only One like roller coaster. A, it was only a tiny bit and I was so young. I was like 11 okay, years old. Right. I was with some boy that like, I like, it was my, I hadn't even like French kiss yet. We were on this roller coaster and I was like screaming at the top of my lungs and like, I was so scared that it was like a lot that I poured my drink all over myself. Cause I'm brilliant, of course. Of course, that's but at just, 11, <laughs> the fact that you had that thought to do that is amazing. I was 11 years old, and I thought it was only a little, but I was like, what if you can see it on my little skirt? And I like this little boy, so I poured my drink all over myself. So that's, there you have it, America. That's smart, though. <laughs> yeah. Now we're learning these things, though. That's great. Vampire or werewolf? Wh which would you consider yourself? Werewolf's wild and passionate, and you know they can't really control. Vampire is very controlled and in head, and they can just. You know. Now with your description of it, I think I'm both. I don't know. I, I would I would say, I, say. I would say I'm, I'm both just because there's sometimes I, I'm a very emotional person and sometimes mm -hmm. I can't control it. And when I when I have anger issues, it definitely shows. And when I have emotional issues, they show too. So okay, so you're crossbreed. I'm a crossbreed between a vampire. I, I would like the eternal life of a vampire, right? And the aggressiveness and, and passion of a werewolf. Okay, so I'm with you. When did you know, like when was the absolute defining moment where you said, I've, I've got something? Like with your, whether it was with your voice or the band or... Okay. I think everybody has that one moment. That's a hard one. We all question ourselves. Yeah. We all think we have something, but question if other people think we have something. Um, it would probably be like my first time performing, probably within this moment, like where you know, I always kind of question myself and I had this big dream and I, I drove in like a U-Haul truck from New York to California to like, you know, make my dreams come true. <laughs> and I think that was like when I finally did a big show with this band and people, all the feedback from the crowd, because I mean, people don't, the crowd doesn't realize how much I think influence they have, but you believe in yourself, but when you see other people starting to believe in you, I think that's where kind of everything starts. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Are you Garth or Wayne? I'm Wayne. Okay. That's, That's a good question. Very though. simple. <laughs> me and me and your drummer discussed. He told me. Yeah. We He's just, like, ask him this. We just we discussed Wayne's world. So how do you feel that the internet has changed what you do, and and do you think it's helped or hurt? I think it's both. Our, our music video just came out, like you know, not even two weeks ago, and it's almost it's a half a million views, and that wouldn't happen because we're not being played on Fuse or MTV or anything like that, if not the internet. So that's a, a really great, strong way. That's the way. good side of the sword. That's the good side of the sword. Um, I think the negative is, is that fans or people don't quite understand that our album sales or our first week sales or things like that actually wind up in the business world have to do with what our band's worth is. That's true. So when they download it and they this and that, they don't understand that you know they actually are hurting the band and not embracing the kind of quality, like buying the CD like in the olden days and reading the lyrics and, and supporting the band. I think that it's, I think that that part is still really important if, if kids can understand. I, I agree with that. I, I've always said, that was always my answer is that it's a double-edged sword because it really is. more people because of the internet find out about your band. The problem is with this generation, kids think music is free. Yeah, they do. And, and, and it's, it's our careers. And it's our careers. And it's what, and they don't realize even that one download turns into yeah. 10,000 downloads and that makes that band eventually maybe break up. I still love going to buy a physical record. I do too. 
Uh, when, when the new John Mayer record came out, I was literally at the store at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's awesome. And I went and bought it and had a physical copy and I like reading the book. Yeah, me that, too. I like reading the see, lyrics. That's what I'm, I'm the same way. So we, we have the same views on that. I love it all. I guess the, another pro is you can have, I've, I've had a lot of really beautiful stories from a lot of fans and maybe we're suicidal or drug addicts and they tell me these deep, they write me messages and these deep, beautiful stories of how something you know so there's things like that that are beautiful but just people don't download yeah. unless it's on iTunes yes what is the scariest moment of your life please tell me you pee in your pants so that I'm not as embarrassed as that. <laughs> I'll tell you the scariest moment of my life I think was <laughs> this is a funny story actually okay. I got sick we we finished touring on in 2009 and we had gone so hard since the middle of 2008 and my band will think this is hilarious, by the way. I got home and I had like blisters on my face oh. and on my lip and like every everywhere. Okay. Anywhere you can have blisters that okay. isn't good for you, I had blisters. I'm a total hypochondriac. Oh, so am I. I totally convinced myself that I had AIDS. Oh my, everybody like, has done that at I one know. point though. And that's that the thing, is like, and you, you don't ever go on the internet, by the way. Don't ever read, because if you, if you go on WebMD, you have cancer <laughs> and AIDS. You have both. <laughs> They'll be like, do you have a cough? Are your shoes green? You're yes. so <laughs> right now. But no, so I convinced no, I myself. I went to the doctor, blood work, everything. Oh, blood God. work comes back, um, and they're and they're like, you have nothing. Your body just, just okay. shut down. Yeah. You just you, you were so going so hard so long, your body just hit the switches, and turned you off. We show up in uh, Edmonton to do a uh, a concert on New Year's Eve. And the band has made me a cake that said, congratulations, you don't have AIDS. <laughs> and I, all I could think about was the person who had to take icing and, and write, write that. Write that. Oh. And I'm like, I just pictured this. What do you want? What? <laughs> you wanted to say what? So that was me thinking I had AIDS was the scary That's an awesome life. answer. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now, musically and personally? Personally, I want to be to the place where I can take care of my my family. My dream is to take care of my mom. Like she doesn't have to work a day in her life, and I want to headline arenas. I want to be shine down, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is what I want. That. We'll we'll be co-headlining together, we do right? That. And eventually, I mean, I, I think that's what I, I want. Big production, and I want you know the blood naked girls with the masks on. Eight girls, ten. 15 girls on stage dancing I, and I pyro. Want to, I want you to be there. You want me to have that? So I can see it. You're going to come out and you're going to play a song with that. I would love to. I would, yeah. be, I would be totally honest. That's I'm, good, though. That's so, my dream. And that answered both. That answered the personal and the, uh, the yeah. musical side. What were you last Halloween? I am the same thing every year for Halloween, and that's uh, Michael Myers. My name is Michael Myers. Right. My real name. Oh, it is? Yeah. So why do you use that? I just always, I think, Michael I think Myers it, is so cool. It is cool. I'm but, Michael Myers. But if you come from the South, I think it's a Southern thing. Just go and by. That'd be memory. Diana. You would be. Diana yeah. Brain. Dirty Diana. See, so you could be Dirty Diana. <laughs> that could be your. That could be like you know, like if you like are an announcer one day. Yeah. Okay. Like you could do the WWE thing. Yeah. If you're an announcer for WWE. That yeah. could be your. That could be your little stage. Um, Michael Myers. Okay. I have a Michael Myers tattoo. This is the same thing that he has on his wrist. Oh, that's so awesome. So. That and I actually the mask. If you've ever walked underneath our stage, I've seen I've seen that. That's, that's the real. That's one of the real original '78. Oh Shatner my masks. So, That's yours. Yes. And I'm, awesome. I'm just. I'm, so I've always been obsessed with Halloween. No, um, I love Halloween. That's yeah. why I asked you that question. So Michael Myers. Okay, cool. So that's that's my uh, that's my Halloween. You have to listen to one record for the rest of your life. Oh. Eat one dish. Oh. And watch one movie. Oh God. I know. I mean, that's... It's better than saying what's your favorite, though. My movie is probably Legend. What was it? The music? Yeah, record. One record. I mean, Deftones has been my favorite band for, like, forever, but I don't... I don't know. It'd probably be, like, Sigur Ross. All right. That's I, acceptable. It's, mellow. like, my... It's mellow, but it kind of gets intense, but it sets my soul at an ease. Um, food? Oh, one dish. I mean, Rocky Road is like my... You eat ice cream. <laughs> I love Rocky Road. Ice, they okay. have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ice cream, legend, Sigur Rós. Uh, my last question would be um, just for for kids um, who, and I know you've heard this before, but just all those kids that like don't, 
don't believe that what we're doing right now, what we're creating right now, can happen for them. Like it's their dream and they live for it and they love it, but they question themselves. What's your advice for them? I think to me it's the most important is everybody says practice in and learning grip. Um, me and Eric agree with this toy. Listen. Yeah. Listen to everything. Listen to people. Mm -hmm. Listen to every kind of music yeah. you can listen to. Mm -hmm. To me that's the most one of the most important things. Um, being a musician in a band has always been my thing. Don't never be a band guy. Always be a musician. You can, I get you it. can adjust to any situation. I think band guys can play with their bands only, mm -hmm. and that's. I think that's being. A, I think being a musician is, is the more important. Yeah, thing and it's about, about the music as a whole. Yeah, just keeping your eyes and ears open at all times. It is a business above all. Yeah, and we know that, and I think that's the most important thing. That's what I would give advice, and just learn your craft, and and, su and yeah. surround yourself with people who who have the same belief yeah. in you. I Absolutely, think, and cancel out the people who don't. So. Absolutely. What is your favorite word? Word love. I, I, I agree. What is your least favorite word? Hate. If you were a Disney princess, which Disney princess would you be? Cinderella. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Yes. <laughs> Alright, and if there is a god okay. and you show up, what yeah. is the first thing you want him to say? Um, I love you. Awesome. Yes, I love God. Maria Brink. Maria Brink, Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go by that now, just for you. I'm just gonna Ladies go by Michael Myers. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You guys are amazing.